Union ticket. The venting of the gas saved us. Miles, easy enough to walk. Einstein, where'd you go now, boy? Hey, welcome back. We we're in 1930-something. I wasn't paying much attention, but... We were just trying to find Doc Brown. Because he gets killed the next day. We want to stop that from happening. So we can get one over then. Um, Edna, isn't it? The old bat from the future. Young man, excuse me, young man. Who? Uh, bat me? from the future. You're the only man in the street, and I'm looking for a man in the street reaction. Naturally, you know about the explosion that destroyed this illegal gin establishment. I read about it. Yeah. What's your opinion of Carl Sagan, the stranger who single-handedly did what the law has been unable to do for ten long years, namely rid Hill Valley of the scourge of liquor? Uh. Hmm. There's got to be some sort of mistake here. Doc, I mean, uh, uh, Carl wouldn't do something like that. It's surprising the lengths a person will go to when it's a clear-cut matter of right and wrong. You've got an honest look about you. You do support the side of righteousness, I trust. Yeah, but you can't go changing the past. You can mark me down as a supporter. The young man said, flashing a boyish yet virile grin. Hill Valley needs more upstanding youths like yourself. Do you have a message for the vicious gangsters who still roam these streets? No doubt plotting to corrupt our citizens with another den of booze, sin, and debauchery? Yeah, I'll take that booze off you. No, uh, not really. <laughs> That's the spirit! Destroy them with indifference! If we refuse to patronize their establishments and glorify their wicked exploits, they'll soon be exposed for the pathetic wretches they are! May I get your name? Yeah, it's... It's Clint Eastwood. Harry Callahan. Yeah. Harry Callahan. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your candid opinions, Mr. Callahan. Edna Strickland, Hill Valley Herald. I know. I met you back. I mean, I'm familiar with your work. You read my column? How sweet. I know it's just an etiquette column, but I believe it'll lead to bigger and better. Oh! Einstein, no. Down, boy. Is this wretched creature yours? He assaulted me once before. What's got into you? Aggressive dogs must be kept on leash at all times. It's the law. Look it up. Doc, I gotta find Doc. 
So do you feel lucky, punk? I guess. Barb shop. The man named in the barbers, I mean, he's better get his haircuts sometimes. Okay. Hey, uh, can I get some moose? What does this look like? A hunting lodge? <laughs> so funny. So funny. What kind of shop is this? Mystic Arms. Majestic Arms. Transients welcome. Transients? I'm not so sure I want to stay in a place that welcomes transients. Well, no, it's fun. Wow, looks like they used a real shark. Mm. Yeah, doesn't look so fake this time. It was. Well, yeah. It's Max Spielberg, wasn't it, that made the Back to the Future 2? Hmm. The shop room in that. Okay, what is this? Not home. Yeah. You gonna buy anything? Thing. Um, no. Then get out, bum. I gotta burst in. That's what I meant to say. Not burst myself in. <laughs> burst myself in. I guess this is where the speakeasy burned down. How would Doc ever get mixed up in that? Hey, there's something more going on, more fishy going on. The law officers. Gail, Zemeckis, and Fine. Attorneys at law. <laughs> no solicitors. Give reference to the writers of Back to the Future. Can I? Can I? Hello? No solicitors! No, I'm not a solicitor. Oh. Bank of Italy? I want a loan, please. How can I help you, sir? Without any money, I don't really have any business in there. Yes. Yeah, let's just wander across the street, shall we? Don't mind the traffic. Sip kitchen. Let's get some nice soup. Some tomato soup. Huh? This would have been probably been the first. Make fly. Biff. Kid. Grandpa. That's Mr. Tan into you, Audi. What are you doing out here? Well, I was getting kind of hungry, so I figured I'd come down here for some free soup. Just thought I'd come down for some soup. Think, McFly. The DA's throwing around subpoenas like Babe Ruth. I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it. If one of those subpoenas landed in the hands of my number cruncher, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. I could even get sent up the river. You wouldn't want that, would you? Would you? Uh, no, of course not, kid. All right, that's better. What are you looking at, punk? Keep your eyes on the soup, kid. Well? Well, what? Hey, soup. What are you still doing here? Sorry, kid, I'll just run back to the safe house. You do that. And McFly? Yes? That hat's too flashy. You better let me hold on to it. Ah. Uh... Now scram! You got it, boss. And don't come out until I give you the all clear. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I'd dump that wimp into the lake. Hey! Anyway, I'm off to make myself irresistible. Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. I came in here because a full doc would have come in here. First. Keep a few extra tables around for our end of the month hobo soirees. Nice. nice rack. Yeah, we got all kinds of uh, culinary enhancements back there. Is this place dodgy? Looks like these pipes go into the basement. Is this a speakeasy? 
Underground speakeasy, I reckon. The kitchen's for management Ooh. only, rummy. Whoa! Yeah, this place is dodgy, isn't it? What do you want? Um. <clears throat> okay. Hey, um. Uh, never mind. You want some soup? That's cool, duck. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, How long will you keep on getting drunk? Get rid of your wine. Eli should mind his own business. What? Maybe I should go to the jail and talk to Doc before I start dialing random people in 1931. Yeah, why not? That's what I would do. <laughs> Just find something else now. <laughs> I get shot. Maybe we should get this dogs in jail. No so maybe I'm we should get that to door jail. without some help. Okay. I better not talk to him. I don't want to mess up his timeline. Mess up his timeline? You've been messing everything up so far. Jesus. Okay, let's go to jail. Is now concerned about the timeline. Sisters of Mercy Soup Kitchen. Come for the soup, stay for the salvation. Some dodgy going on down there. There we go. Hill Valley Police Station. Christ, this place looks old, even for 1931. Doc, are you Doc. in there? <gasps> Marty! Doc! Quick, Scott! What are you doing here? You sent for me, Doc. I did? When? May 14th, 1986. 1980? <gasps> the automatic retrieval system, of course. I'd almost forgotten about that. So what's our plan for getting you out of here? Plan? We don't need a plan. We don't. Not in the slightest. The police picked me up for that speakeasy fire a couple of weeks ago, but the DA hasn't got a case. They're releasing me tomorrow morning. So basically, I traveled okay. 50 years into the past to deliver your car? Sorry about that, but it's so wonderful to see you. We have a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, you, you might want to hold off on that, Doc. Great Scott! I'm going to be gunned down by gangsters on the steps of the courthouse. Why would they do that? Yes, they didn't approve of my burning down their speakeasy. Very funny, Doc. Maybe now we should come up with a plan? A plan? Right. But what? Wait, did he actually burn down the... speakeasy? Let's go back in time. Why don't I take the DeLorean, go back in time before you were arrested, and stop you from getting caught in the first place? Don't even think about it. Without my unjust incarceration, the events that sent you into the past might never happen, resulting in a paradox of continuum shattering proportions. Jeez, we've been back together for five minutes, Doc, and you're already talking about the end of the universe. I've missed that. Don't be ridiculous, Marty. I was only referring to the end of the universe as we know it. Yes, break out, Joe. Well, I suppose I could just get some dynamite and break out of jail. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Not just to me, but to random innocent people in the past. The repercussions could be... <gasps> that's it! What's it? My rocket-powered drill. You have a rocket-powered rocket drill? drill? Not yet. I haven't built it yet. You've lost me, Doc. Listen, a few months ago, my 17-year-old self sent in a patent application for a rocket-powered drill. I abandoned the project after I never heard back from the patent office, but the prototype should be nearly complete. Great, I'll just run back to your lab and... No, no, I said nearly complete. You'll need me to help you finish it. How the hell am I supposed to sneak a half-finished rocket-powered drill into your cell? Not me, me! 1931 me! Wait a minute, Doc. Oh. You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket-powered drill to break you out of jail? Precisely! Yeah, if that's... Won't talking to yourself yeah. cause, you know, irreparable damage to the space-time continuum or something? It should be fine. I've already invented the idea of the rocket drill. 
You've just got to go my younger self into finishing the prototype. If that's successful, he might not want to build the time machine. Okay. Okay, he? let's say Where's I go he? along with this crazy idea. Where can I find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why did you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? They'll know where to find me. Soup kitchen. Got it. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. Ooh, thanks for that. I was actually looking for some soup, so... I guess I better get started. Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out of here in no time. I'm not worried. Once you and my younger self put your heads together, you'll be unstoppable. It's still something dodgy going on in this soup kitchen. But they've got a telephone, so I can use the telephone and just get the hell out of there, you know. Guy's dodgy as hell. Yeah, I should warn that for a guy about the soup. Dime. Brown result. Uh, hi. Uh, do you know where I could find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is currently tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. Ooh, may I say his calling? The courthouse? The doc never told me he worked at the courthouse. Wow, well, great Scott. So, Doc's working at the courthouse. And Doc's also in jail. Hmm. Okay, let's go across the road to the courthouse. Uh, can't get across the road without being run over. There's a courthouse there. Wow, that's pretty cool actually. Einstein, what are you doing? Hey, UK boys, nice sunny day. Hey, how you doing, Einy? He's fine in the park. Enjoying the sunshine, aren't you, Arnie? So, hmm. Young Doc is actually processing the papers for the rest of the old Doc. those. These are very sensitive legal documents. Nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers of the court. Papa, I mean, Judge Brown says so. Judge Brown? Doc, uh, nice to meet you. I'm, uh, Harry Callahan. Emmett Brown, but I am a law clerk, not a doctor. Now please get out of my way. I have important business to transact. What am I missing here? Or do we take H to stand for community line operation? And just follow him. Hey Einstein, it's Doc. Can you recognize him? What's he gonna go? Relative to the speed of light. No, it comes back to eight. He's not gonna go into that soup kitchen, is he? No. Well. Shit, did I just lose him? What? What? Oh, you're kidding. Oh, there he is. Listen, Emmett, you don't know me, but I'm your friend. I'm not big on friends. They get in the way of work. Listen, I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? You must have me mixed up with somebody else. I'm in law. I have absolutely no interest in science. Yeah, that's your dad talking, Come on, wait up a minute. 
You again? Can't you see I'm busy? What's this important business you're up to? It's a legal matter, very complicated, very abstruse. I need I need to obtain five sets of initials on every copy of this writ of indemnification before Pop... I mean, before Judge Brown can even think of granting a waiver to the party of the first part. You have no idea what it's about, do you? That's how important it is. Yeah, I'm, See, I'm sort of in the science business myself. That's why I sought you out. Not that I care in the least, because science is the furthest thing from my own area of interest, which is law, but I don't believe you. It's true. I'm a scientist. So tell me something, Mr. Scientist, from your vast storehouse of scientific knowledge. Uh, the leg bone's connected to the thigh bone? Amazing. Anybody okay, so you don't want your old man to know. That's fine. Listen, we all keep secrets, but I'm telling you, you can level with me, level with me about this science project of yours. I am not no. a scientist. Go ahead, ask me what E equals. What does E equal? I have absolutely no idea. See, I don't know where you got your information from about me, Mister, but you're wrong, wrong, wrong. Multiply by the inversion of H has to come out less than expectation value of A, right? On Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan. Come on, Doc. Uh, Emmett, uh, drop the Legal Eagle Act. I got something more important for you to do. Mr. Callahan. I'll have you know that the law is the very mortar that holds society together. And we in the legal profession are like brick masons building the edifice of the future. Your dad tell you that? Every morning. <laughs> so, Emmett, what time are you through with work? Depends. On weeknights, Pop sometimes keeps me in the office till 9. 9 at night? But today's Saturday. Right. So I probably won't get off before 10. 10 at night? Jeez. How about you knock off work early and I'll buy you a beer? Uh, or soda? Uh, what do you say? Don't try to tempt me from my duty with sugary beverages. Keeping the wheels of justice turning, that's my one passion in life. Besides, if I left before eight, my pop would kill me. Uh... Come on, you can trust me, Doc. Uh, Emmett, it's your future I'm looking out for. In more ways than one. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you and science. Oh, that word again! If you insinuate I'm a scientist once more, I'll sue you for defamation of character! Will you just give me a chance? A Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan! Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Yeah, dude. Emmett, uh, about don't your... Don't say it. Okay. <laughs> I know. No, 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 no. Not possible. No. Can I go into the courthouse? I don't need to go in there anymore. We need to go in the first place. Now, if H stands for one, for a one-dimensional harmonic oscillator, then naturally H2A multiple... Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan. Damn it. Uh, about Don't your... Don't say it. Or do we Wait, take... Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible... The only <laughs> people... I... Yeah. Okay. Damn it. Uh, about Don't your... Say it. Expectation value, but only if the coefficient of oh, I know. I know. friction remains constant and the gravitational constant is variable. Wait, is that even possible? Nah, oh, let's start over. Force equals mass. Mm, nah. Uh, do we have anything? There's two things I could do. Shall I show him? 
With this break, with the space time continuum, I showed him his future work in his own handwriting. Yeah, if I show him his notebook in his own handwriting, he must recognize that. Come on, Doc. Doc's notebook doesn't belong to him. Okay, actually, it does belong to him, but not yet. In any of it's probably a really bad idea to give him a book full of all the things he hasn't invented yet. <laughs> yeah, that would be fucked things up, wouldn't it? Yeah, see, see what he does with this. Oh, you're done. Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A, 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 H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A, I, oh. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan. Damn it. Uh, about Don't your. Say it. So we got a recording of his voice. Does that mean. I want to hear this. Yeah, I was just thinking that if I take that back to uh, Doc, the older Doc would give the answer to the younger Doc, and that maybe convince him that I'm a scientist. Ah. Then he might want to talk to me about the drill. Well, what the fuck are you going? That's Newton. But how many Newtons are required to maintain a constant mass of there's a police station down here, isn't it? Oh, you... Come on, Marty. Can you run? No, you can't run. So, Doc, does this ring a bell? Oh, think, Emmett, think! H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A, H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A, I... Good oh. grief! Is that me? I sound so... Young? I was gonna say intense. I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, but what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell my younger self that H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional membrane. So... It'll be <laughs> fine. You just give me a chance. Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan. Maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. What did you just say? I said maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Yeah. Great Scott! If H is the Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A. <laughs> That's it! That's Excellent. the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week! I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket power drill. Where did you learn so much about science? Yeah, he, like, he loves the jewels, so. Well, it's like, like this. If you know about my rocket power drill, then there can only be one explanation. Oh, okay. What? You're from the patent office! I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome! I'm at your service. What can I do for you? Can I see your rocket-powered drill? Of 
course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. Nah, that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> that's fully operational. <gasps> Tonight. <gasps> Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, uh, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done! I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel! I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol! And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. Part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to what you get the alcohol you need. Shh. It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Here's the subpoena. Arthur McFly? I've delivered a subpoena before. I've a subpoena my grandpa? Oh, man, that's it's, heavy. It's Kid Tannen. Hey, I, I just saw him at the soup kitchen, yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. No! Why not? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. <laughs> cool. We've got some stuff to do. We shall do that next week. So until then, adios!